The ultimate male fantasy is the idea of dudes wanting to die in a war, be John Wick, or have a noble six last stand against the Covenant. And Helldivers 2 satisfies that craving we all desire. Join the Helldivers. It does so beautifully by pitting four dudes into a hell on earth last stand situation where you're outnumbered 1000 to 1. Helldivers has been my newest addiction lately. I played the original all the way back in 2017 and I remember it being actually really good. Never did I think I would hear from Helldivers again, but here we are. I spent 55 hours in this game and I regularly play on Helldive difficulty, which is the max. Although I'm a little ashamed to say that most of that time is fighting against Terminids or the bugs, I just love killing Terminids. I'm sorry, robot lovers. But I'm not here to talk about my personal accounts. Let's dive into what Helldivers is really about. I couldn't think of a better way to describe the Helldivers themselves than the death core of Krieg from Warhammer 40k. If you don't know what they are, that's fine. Both of these dudes will throw themselves at bugs, get pitted in the most inhabitable planets, and still yearn for more. They even gave the enemy bug faction a pretty similar name. And if you want to stay on the topic of media references, this game derives a lot of inspiration from Starship Troopers with its entire idea of being a satire on patriotism. I'm doing my part. I'm doing my part. I'm doing my part. And the bug killing thing too, I guess, of course. This game is the embodiment of the quote, dudes will look at this and go hell yeah meme. They just give you so many tools to carry out all of your boyish desires. From carpet bombing, to, to grenade launchers and cannons, to orbital lasers, all the way to dropping 500 kilogram bombs and mini nukes. These are just a few of the tools that make this game really stand out. Playing DDR on your arm, running from a bile titan just to pull out the most ungodly weapon humankind has produced will never, ever get old. Plus, the sound effects are just so visceral and satisfying. I mean, just listen to these. I also appreciate that when you're shooting a gun like the Heavy MG, if you shoot it for long enough, your character will just start screaming. <laughs> Truly special for that last line of defense feeling. Everything just has a weight to it, like the universe is ending and it really is only up to you and the 400,000 other people playing to defend your home world. As a Helldiver, your mission is just to kill bugs and robots to defend Super Earth. If you die in the game, that's it. You just watch the life of a 19 year old soldier vanish. Instead of getting revived like in many games, you're simply replaced with just another soldier. Which I think is a fitting touch. A friend of mine said the best roleplay experience is to put the random voice actor setting on so that it feels like you're actually a new soldier every time. But. Yuri Lowenthal is hard to beat for me, so I just like to stick with his. Even above the great gameplay and amazing voice actors, the strongest aspect and the whole reason Helldivers has its charm is the small little touches the developers put into making the universe feel complete. They make it so when you drop out of a pod, your armor and cape is completely fresh looking, like you just picked it up from the cleaners but a few gallons of nursing bug barf and blown up brain chunks from your dead teammates later and you look like you've seen some stuff. It's also a nice little gauge for how long you've survived in this life too. And it will also start to tear the bottom of your cape off too. There's just so many small little touches that bring this game to life for me. My favorite one of these little touches they add to the game is its word choice or diction if you will. There are so many words that they use to convey that you are nothing in the grand scale of this war. When you fail a mission, they don't just call it mission failed and move on, they call you a worthless sacrifice, which is quite possibly the biggest gut punches a game can give you for failing. 
and even when you do succeed, the game will show you exactly how much you contributed to the war effort, which is about uh, a thousandth of a percentage just for one planet too. Not to mention all of the catchphrases you hear all over the internet like spreading democracy, drinking a nice cup of liberty, etc, etc. Think of how many times you've seen a clip of this game on Instagram, TikTok, YouTube, whatever. There's a reason for its explosive success. And that's because it can convey its entire essence, meaning what the game stands for and what it tries to convey in just 20 seconds. Thus, it has created a sort of camaraderie between all players because anyone that has seen or has played Helldivers can relate to what's happening in those clips. Not to mention, it's also very readable and easy to understand for non-video game players. But I'm getting too off topic. This is an idea I plan to cover another time. I know I'm all over the place with this video, but there really isn't a way to structure all of the chaoticness that this game has. It has absolutely been my addiction lately, and I haven't had a similar experience playing a game besides maybe Planetside 2. Both games are sci-fi setting on a large-scale war, except that game has a thousand plus people playing on one map, all fighting for the same, all fighting for territory. Pretty similar to the way Helldivers 2's territory system works, except that's against robots and the Game Master or whatever. This has sparked even more cooperation and input in the community. It's fun to work with a ton of people on the same goal. And when people were defending Malevolon Creek, the subreddit went absolutely nuts trying to recruit people to help defend it or attack it. I don't know. I wasn't there. Sorry. Anyways, that's pretty much all I had to say. I just absolutely love this game and think that it's going in a great direction. I think that there's going to be a really strong community behind it for the rest of time, probably. And I'm excited to see what they do next. Anyways, if you're new here, go ahead and subscribe. I usually make lethal company videos, but I'm slowly pivoting to do more things like this, where I just get to rant about something I'm passionate about. Uh, or I'm planning on also diving into the indie game community and making some videos on that. So. Hope you enjoyed and uh, I'll see you in the next one.